Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Business as Unusual. Happy Friday, everyone. Uh, my name is Megan from Greater London Properties um, and just to give you a little bit of an introduction as to uh, what we do here all the time, I'm just going to turn this down a minute, it's too loud. <laughs> That's better. Good job. Um, yeah, good job. <laughs> um, so Greater London Properties set up a uh, Facebook group called Central London's Lockdown Support Group. This is mainly just to give businesses that platform that they need uh, during this time. Um, and we've been doing these live chats now for a few weeks, just meeting the people behind the businesses. Um, and today we are speaking to Ian Richards. Um, I'm gonna pause it now because I can't concentrate. <laughs> yep. So that song um, is called Sleeping Beauties uh, that we were playing. And uh, that's one of Ian and his band's song because uh, he actually is the lead singer and guitarist um, of Lunatics Lost. Um, yeah. and also works for uh, the John Snow, which is one of our favourite pubs in London. Um, it's on 39 Broadwick Street and it's close to our office and we are regulars, aren't we Ian? <laughs> Very regular, yeah. <laughs> Almost too regular. Too <laughs> yeah. That was brilliant. Now Ian, um, we'll get talking about both of those aspects because I want to hear all about the Jon Snow and I want to hear all about your band as well because I think that this will be uh, really interesting for everyone to hear both. Um, so let's start off with the, with the pub, like the Jon Snow, uh, the, the love of our lives, we're missing the taddies. <laughs> like us all. Um, yeah. Tell us about the Jon Snow and, and, and other pubs in London, in Soho. Uh, well, John Snow, I guess, uh, good location, uh, Broadwick Street on the corner of uh, Lexington Street and uh, Broadwick Street just by Carnaby Street, for those people who don't know it. Uh, pretty rammed Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. Fairly busy on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays as well, strangely enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a part of the Sam Smith chain. So, uh, yeah, the beer prices, fame for its uh, reasonable beer prices, I guess. So uh, that's why people come and drink lots of it. You know, cheaper than a lot of other solo pubs. Uh, yeah, but it's location, location, isn't it, for, for Jon Snow? Yeah, the prices are brilliant. Um, we love to go there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's good that the prices are cheaper because <laughs> we were able to do this. Um, but it's always uh, it's always serviced with a smile as well, Ian, isn't it? Always, always. A broad <laughs> smile. And, and, a, and, a, and a giggle or two. Yeah, and a giggle or two, definitely. And you, uh, you do have quite a lot of regulars because I guess once you've kind of uh, chosen a pub in Soho, you, you do keep going back. Is that right? Yeah, we we do. I guess it's, uh, <laughs> I guess again, it's, it's location, isn't it? I mean, I think for the people that work in the vicinity, uh, when you finish work, you don't necessarily want to travel that far. Uh, if you worked in Soho, why would you go to Camden or Shoreditch at <laughs> five thirty on a Friday night? You wouldn't. <laughs> You'd go to your closest pub, and I guess we occupy that role for lots of people. He occupies a special place in people's hearts, and I'm pleased with that. And all our staff are great. And uh, we should mention a big shout out here as well for my colleague Peter Vallis, who sorted out the technical issue before we, we came aboard. Peter, your star, thank you very much. Peter is locked down with me here in the building. So uh, he's then, yeah. So, Peter Vallis, thank you. Thanks to so we can actually see Ian today. I'm looking at the wrong yeah, side. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you tell us about life in lockdown uh, with the pub at the moment. Oh yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of a drag, really, isn't it? I mean, it's it's I, I don't. Know, I'm, I'm sure the first few weeks were quite enjoyable for people having a bit of time and a bit of space and, and whatever. But I mean, I think you you reach this point. I'm pretty frustrated with it all. Uh, but yeah, life in lockdown and so it's incredible to see so well as it is. You know, so is one of the busiest parts of Europe, and there's nobody on the streets. There's literally a handful of people walking around at any given point. Uh, the first week or so was really weird. It was there's sort of you know post nuclear holocaust feel to it all, and it was quite eerie actually. It was quite eerie. It's quite weird sort of sensation. But uh, yeah, got used to it a little bit now. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, is is this the new normal? That's the phrase, isn't it? Everything's a new normal. I, I don't know. Is, is this is this a new normal? So I we'll see. Whether people will come back to work in offices again, I mean, that's a that's a, a big question. Now they're used to working at home. Now companies have worked out that people can work from home. Will people come into offices en masse? I mean, it's a, that's a tantalising yeah. question, yeah. I think, for later in the year, isn't it? 
especially because it's uh, it's offices and then it's tourism, isn't it? Because obviously with being in central London and right next to Carnaby Street, um, yep. alongside the regulars, you would have had some tourists, you know, like coming in and being like, oh, what's the vibe here? Is this a London atmosphere? Um, and it's the same for like all of the businesses around Soho, uh, which is a shame, really. But I am, I'm, I'm really hoping. I'm, I might be a little bit too positive. Um, but I'm really hoping uh, that things eventually can get back to normal, just so that we can live life as we know it. But yeah, this might be the new normal for a while. Um, I think it will be for a while. The irony, of course, being John Snow uh, is is a a bit of a mecca for epidemiologists across the world because of John Snow's role. So given that we're in an epi epidemiological crisis, uh, we have had people, yeah, it's a good word, right? Um, we have had people turn up outside the pub and looking at the pub during the during the lockdown. So we're, we're, st we're still a destination. Yeah, how about that? That's really good. And you're there yeah. waving at them. <laughs> That's it. That's all I can do. <laughs> playing, a, playing a bit of music out of the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> honest, a bit of rock band. Honest. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um what so you guys you guys officially shut on the the friday before uh the 23rd wasn't it yeah, it was march the 20th was our last shift and uh it was peter and i funny enough who was working that shift and we closed the doors and uh, we haven't traded since so uh yeah i guess you know nobody knows and everybody's watching with well yeah i think we'd probably be one of the last industries to open up uh, i mean i'd be quite surprised if the pubs open simultaneously to shops and schools and everything else it's it's, it's unlikely so we could yeah. really be here for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. I am pleased that the um, that the council allowed because at one point they were talking about kind of reducing completely the or outside space, wasn't it? And they were just yeah. getting rid of scrapping it. And then obviously it was appealed for, and then there was the the kind of restrictions put in place. As long as you stayed within those restrictions, it was okay. I think yeah. that's a blessing um, because if it, it is allowed to open up again with certain restrictions, um, then obviously people can stand outside. And then social distancing can happen. So um, I'm really pleased that they did agree that. Yeah, I mean, in the middle of winter, stood out there with a big yellow jacket on. It's not a lot of fun, I tell you. <laughs> telling people out there to... in the rain, the snow. Uh, I, I know. <laughs> telling people to get behind that yellow line is is not is not a thrill. It's not a thrill. <laughs> so... If anybody doesn't know, Ian's also Ian is also the marshal. Um, <laughs> The outside yeah. marshal at John Snow, he tells us to get behind the yellow line. Um, so <laughs> make sure you do so, and then he will have to have less time outside too. That's it. It's, it's simple. Eh? Stick to the rules. It's simple. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get barred one of these days. It's like, right. Oh, don't ruin it for everyone else. Um, now, this is one question that uh, you wrote down. <laughs> this, I really want to hear your thoughts on it. Um, oh, so what are your on uh, Boris at the moment, Ian. <laughs> well, is is Boris a brave heart or a burrito or a broad bean? <laughs> I think Boris is a broad bean. Yeah, a broad bean uh, floating around in a bowl of soup that he doesn't know <laughs> how to get out of. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I wasn't sure of him in the beginning. I think after this week's events. Yeah, I'm glad Keir Starmer's gone from a bit really and asked him to explain the care home situation. I think that's a good thing. I think all of us ended in this with a fairly decent spirit of goodwill and trust in the government. And yeah, the last three or four weeks have been a bit of a communications disaster for them, really. You know, it's, uh, yeah. it's all over the place. It's a shambles. And, uh, you know, I think everybody's sensitive to the fact that a virus exists and everything re everybody recognises that it's quite potent. But you've got to tell us the truth. You know, you've got to get your communications right. And it, quite clearly, there's loads of overlap in evidence. That doesn't really add up. Doesn't really make much sense. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a bit of a shambles, really. And unfortunately, yeah, I think, uh, um, agents took the hit for that as well. Like last minute news. Oh, you can go back tomorrow. We were like, what? Um, so now we're rushing around trying to do everything. So um, yeah, that was uh, he mentioned none of that on Sunday, and then all of a sudden just came out with it. But um, we're dealing with it and we're coping with it, and it's and I'm sure a lot of other agents are as well. But um, it's just last minute news or no no news at all. It's difficult. It's, it's, it's difficult. Well, yeah, this week, I, I don't know whether I'm allowed to leave England to go into Wales. And if I get to Wales, whether I can meet my mother and father at the same time, or whether I meet one of them in the morning and one of them in the afternoon. That is <laughs> complicated stuff. Right? It's, you know, I just like to know, that's all. You know. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. 
Um, <laughs> thank you for that one. Um, I want to speak to you about your music now, um, sure. just to kind of touch on that, because um, I have become a little bit of a groupie in the last 48 hours. <laughs> hey, everybody needs them. Everybody needs them. <laughs> Um, and um, I did say to Ian that um, the, the song that I played at the very beginning, uh, don't worry, play it again at the end for those who missed it. Um, <laughs> I mean, it actually got me out of bed this morning because um, it's just such an upbeat song, but apparently that wasn't the message you, you were trying to give up. <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, I, I'm glad that it's had that effect, really. You know, you, could, you never know how art connects with people, do you? You never know. You never know. Exactly. Um, so tell us a little bit more about it. Tell us a little bit more about Lunatics Lost um, and where you kind of started out. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's myself, uh, guitar and vocals, Jojo Koo, uh, bass and backing vocals, <coughs> and occasional lead vocals, actually. Uh, mono on the drums. Uh, the idea was always to have as a three-piece band with male and female vocals. Nice sort of texture within the music, really. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess things were picking up about a year ago. And uh, you know, I, I, we've had, yeah, a couple of mishaps, really. I broke my arm in March last year. Well, I've been a series of three marches, actually. So March 2018, we did a UK tour. March 2019, I broke my arm. And March 2020, we've had a pandemic. What a trilogy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit on hiatus, really. But, uh, yeah, band, we did some decent recordings, and we got a pretty strong following in London. It's just trying to see if the band can break out of that and uh, connect elsewhere, really. That's where, you, that's where we find ourselves. You've got a song called Soho as well, haven't you? I, I do. Written about the Joel Snow. But, well, written about me working at the Joel Snow. Yeah. yeah. It's brilliant. Mentions Broderick Street and everything. If you haven't listened to that yet, everyone, listen. <laughs> Get on YouTube. Um, yeah, please do. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out Spotify. Yeah. We're all on Spotify. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, where would you prefer people to watch it for kind of like views and stuff? What gives you the best? Um, our most, yeah, our most recently recorded, our most recently recorded EP went up on Spotify this week. So I think if you go to Lunatics Lost on Spotify, you'll get all the new tracks, as well as Soho and Sleeping Booties. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so tell us a little bit more. So you you must have had influences, um, kind of like in your past to bring you where you are now. Tell us tell us yeah. who in, who's influenced you. Well, I think when you when you grew up in South Wales in the Welsh Valleys, uh, there's you haven't got that much immediate access to to. To band. So I used to have to go to Newport and Cardiff to watch gigs and so on. Uh, but initially, as a youngster, my, my bad favorite band was uh, Manic Street Preachers uh, from my town in Wales. So they were a big influence on me. And I guess a lot of the Seattle bands, Nirvana and Soundgarden and Pearl Jam and bands of that era, really, that sort of guitar sound. Uh, in the most recent times, I suppose, uh, got Pixies, The Breeders, Dinosaur Junior, Sonic Youth, all those kind of bands. Uh, uh, in the modern era, I suppose, I, I love the White Stripes a lot. They were a big band for me. Queens of the Stone Age, uh, After Driving, My Bloody Valentine, they're a great band. So, yeah, the alternative rock world, I guess. Just, just the one, then. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, well, just the one. <laughs> yeah, you're a product of all your influences, <laughs> you? that's, that's the thing. You're, you're, you're not just one thing. You're, you're... Take a little bit from everything and then make it your own, which is spot on. Like, it's exactly what you have done. Art, in, art is theft, isn't it? Artist theft, yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, so tell us more about obviously the lockdown and music industry and how it's uh, how you think it's affected the music industry because um, it's a bit of a blow. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, like every other industry, really, the music industry is going to face problems and its own form of problems. Uh, the key area for us really is the live sector, where rock band and to emerge, for the band to emerge and earn money off music, if you like, it's played live. But there's going to be a lot of trust took out of the live sector and the risk of ticket sales and whether promoters will want to put on tours. I mean, that's going to apply probably even more to bigger, more established bands and bands at our level. You know? So uh, I think it's going to be really difficult. I, I can't see much change in the next 18 months to two years, really. I mean, it's going to have to stabilise itself. It's going to have to ensure they can recoup what they've lost this year, stabilise next year. Uh, a very good friend of mine is a, is a manager of... Uh, a, a really well-established band and uh, she's got all kinds of problems forecast in the future and, and so they're all real problems you know it's, it, it, it'll apply to lots of other bands and lots of other markets and uh, yeah tricky times, tricky yeah, it's times. Sad. Um, how are you spending this time have you been doing many lives I guess you haven't been able to make a camera work for this. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now that you know how to work it, are you, are you gonna do? Are you gonna do lives? Look, do you like my air guitar there? I'm getting into character. Um, yeah, are you gonna do? Are you gonna do live shows for the, like on on screen? Do you think like virtual live shows? Yeah, maybe maybe later this summer. I've used the first few weeks basically to just play lots, and you know, it's a. Uh, if there's only, it's probably one of the few positives is lots of time to write songs, really. So yeah, this period has been more of a kind of creative writing period, and uh, yeah, we'll set some stuff up later this summer, I think, and uh, yeah, have a lockdown sure. festival. Lockdown content. Yeah, lockdown festival. Three different nights: Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Three different acoustic sets. Live in my room. I think that's the plan. Do it on August bank holiday to replace the Reading festival. I think that's it. <laughs> there's no Reading festival. Really <laughs> Just send out something now. Don't worry about the festivals being cancelled. You can tune in here. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I'm sure you'll be able to get all three of you on the Zoom as well. Working it out. Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting carried away with my hair guitar now. Um, so what do you um what do you do you think that it will be kind of uh your thoughts? Obviously nobody knows, but do you think that it might be kind of back to normal within 2021, 2022? Do you think that it's just gonna be yeah, I mean, it, it's, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I guess it's the truth. Well, yeah, we, we don't know, do we? I mean, we, we don't know how long we're going to be in this position. And I guess the, the, the real problem is being able to plan anything. You can't, that, that's the real problem. The problem isn't necessarily playing it, but you can't plan it. So, like for us, that's hugely problematic, really. Uh, yeah, impossible to make a decision. I spent the first week of the lockdown cancelling about eight gigs cancelling three months of rehearsals cancelling recording time yeah pretty depressing fortnight really <laughs> you know you spend months putting everything together yeah a lot to take it on is what it is. yeah um yeah. just as a little bit of a because obviously everyone is in lockdown at the moment uh what you what would be your five uh your top five lock lockdown discs <laughs> <laughs> Well, I thought it's, it's, I think we should go to the home really of where alternative music started. And not a lot of people really know this, but the most original alternative bands came from Detroit. So I thought, yeah, Detroit, America. And I thought I would do a Detroit top five, really. So started in 1969, uh, MC5, Kick Out the Jams, amazing live album. It was unusual for a band to start their career with a live album, but it's recorded at Detroit's Grand Ballroom. Uh, one of the best live albums ever. MC5, Kick Out the Jams, 1970, The Stooges, uh, Funhouse. Any any of the first three Stooges albums are brilliant, but that's my favourite of, of the three. Uh, then Iggy Pop goes solo. David Bowie keeps him alive and takes him to Berlin, and Iggy Pop records Lust for Life. So I think Iggy Pop, Lust for Life is a good good approach for this period, I think, really, for us to, to want to start living again. Get it in there, kids. Uh, Detroit number four. One of my favorite guitar players, uh, Jack White, White Stripes. So I would say White Blood Cells by the White Stripes, 2001. They got big on Elephant, but White, but White Blood Cells, I think it's a slightly better album for me. And then number five, I'm going to put a Greatest Hits in there. And it's Motown's Greatest Hits. People often forget that Motown was from Detroit. And I, my mother and father bought me a history of Motown when I was a kid. And I, uh, that's how I learned to play bass, really, was Motown songs. So, uh, yeah, MC5, The Stooges, Iggy Pop, White Stripes. Motel Greater Sets, Detroit Top 5, yeah. Perfect, that's going to be my playlist today. I'm going to, I'm going to type in all of those. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of other people will as well. Now they've got that list, they're going to work through it today. I hope so, um, yeah, and yeah, the, Yours is going to be at the top, though, Ian. After everyone's heard this teaser, the people that don't already know you, they're going to get on it, I swear. Um, <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, I'm going to read a few of these comments because I can see quite a few, so I don't want them to think that I'm forgetting about them. Um, right. So Sarah has commented, uh, basically saying, you kept mentioning the location of the Jon Snow, uh, but it is also the team that work there that keep us coming back. Can't wait to see you all again for a pint. So that's really nice, Ian. <laughs> well, there you go. I think that reflects on the management as well. Well done, Dave, for being a great manager to us. He loved that. I hope you are watching, Dave. <laughs> Um, and then Sterling Burke um, has said, yay, lunatics lost. Um, how much is a beer in the Jon Snow? <laughs> uh, um, depends what you're drinking, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then I think Sarah's answered that question, four pound for a pint of taddies. Um, but then uh, Rob has said three taddies, uh, one dash of lime for outside, please, mate. <laughs> He's cheeky that Rob, isn't he? Yeah, he's cheeky. Yeah. I I'd love to serve you, Rob. I genuinely would. I would I would it would be a thrill if I could, but I can't. Honest. And Lynn Walsh wants a butty outside as well, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Lynn. <laughs> oh brilliant. <laughs> um, just to finish just to finish off though, um you're you know, you're a busy man, Ian. Um, and this lockdown has, has really locked you down because obviously you work in the John Snow, you're part of Lunatics Lost, and you also do some yeah. some other things as well, don't you? On the answer, on the on the side. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a trustee of the Lesotho Rugby Academy. So a friend of mine, Dan Elwood, uh, went over to Lesotho. I guess most people would pronounce it Lesotho, but I uh, went to Lesotho as a as a economist for the British government. And uh, yeah, the the project was set up, and yeah, we got thousands of little kids in Lesotho uh, playing rugby and getting HIV education and gender equality education. So yeah, I spent quite a chunk of time on that really. And uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. Great to see it happening really. And they, they, they have a lot really, of support of it. Yeah. Have you been, uh, have you been playing rugby all your life then? Yeah, I played growing up in Wales. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, oh, I, I, well. it's a bit of a serious deal in Wales rugby. It's uh, you, yeah. <laughs> If you don't play it, you watch it. If you don't play it, you don't watch it. You still talk about it because you hit it. So everybody talks about rugby in some capacity. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I won't bring up uh, who keeps winning in the England versus uh, Wales matches. So I won't bring that up. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> very wise. Very wise. <laughs> Just leave that there. Um, <laughs> Um, but yes, um, do you have, sorry, last question, and then we'll leave everyone to have a lovely sure. weekend. Um, just to leave it on this, do you have any advice for any other bands out there? Advice for bands? Uh, yeah. Be, be brave, really. Be brave in what you write. I think the country urgently needs <clears throat> a tidal wave of, of alternative bands with, with more cutting edge songs, really. You know, I grew up in an era where people were writing great songs. Radiohead, Manic Street Preachers, Pulp, Blur, Oasis, all those bands. They, they, they were all great songwriters. And I think there's a little bit of that's going out in the country because of uh, a lack of platforms for bands. You know, it doesn't help with the collapse of magazines and, and uh, other media channels that used to be cru crucial to, to elevate bands. But uh, yeah, be brave. Write songs that, you know, stop writing cliches, really. That's what I would advise about. <laughs> be bold. Stop writing cliches. Yeah. Don't be Generation Snowflake. Be different. Be tougher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Very inspirational. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really love this chat today and I've, I've really enjoyed myself. I've been laughing the entire way through, as everybody can see. I hope they've been laughing too. Um, and um, you've really set us up for the weekend. So um, thank you for coming on today and thank you for this. It's been great. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Sarah and Winston. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <Except> <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant right i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna finish up on the song just to uh just to let us go <laughs> there you go good stuff good stuff <laughs> <laughs> have a good weekend everyone check out their music <laughs> thank you Megan. bye bye, -bye.